Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be trying something a little different and I'm going to be sharing a Fusion 360 tutorial. I will be showing you how to 3D model the crown that I made for my Halloween costume video a couple of weeks ago. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really looking forward to recording the voiceover for the video because I'm not really sure how it will be received on YouTube. I'm personally someone that prefers um, like 3D modeling tutorials where there is no talking and I can just watch and copy whatever the person's doing on the screen. But I know some people prefer hearing every step being spoken to them. So I thought I'd try that version because I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what you guys want. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Anyway, let me know what you think and let's start with the tutorial. So here are a few things that I'd like to mention before getting into this tutorial. When I mention the origin, this is the object that I am referring to. You can toggle its visibility by clicking on this button, but mostly it will appear by itself when creating things in Fusion. It's also represented by this icon in the sketching space. When I mention sketching horizontal or vertical lines, I mean a line that has the horizontal slash vertical constraint icon. Fusion will snap your line to the horizontal or vertical position and you will know it has when this icon shows up. Alternatively, in order to make a perfectly horizontal or vertical line, you can sketch a slanted line, select it, and then click on the horizontal slash vertical constraint button. And when starting out with this project, make sure that you are in the solid tab and not any of the other tabs like the surface tab. So phase one is to make the main base of the crown. Create a sketch on the top plane and sketch a circle from the center of the origin that is 117 millimeters in diameter. Select O on your keyboard to bring up the offset option and select the circle sketch. Create an offset of 6.5 mm towards the outside. Select the offset plane button from the construct drop down menu and click on the top plane. Set the plane 50 mm above the top plane. Create a sketch on this new plane and sketch another circle from the center of the origin that is 152 mm in diameter. Select O on your keyboard again, select the new circle sketch and create an offset of 6.5 mm towards the outside. Select the create drop down menu and click on loft. Create a loft by selecting the outer circles from each sketch. Make the sketches visible again and select the loft option again. Now create a loft cut by selecting the inner circles from each sketch. Make sure that it says cut instead of join, new body or intersect next to operation. Phase two is making the crown arcs. Create a sketch on the top plane and then sketch a horizontal construction line from the center origin point by clicking on the construction button and then sketching the line. Sketch a second line from the center origin point and set the angle dimension to 22.5 degrees from the first line. From the create drop down menu, select circular pattern 
and circular pattern the second line 8 times. Select two adjacent lines in the front of the model and then click on the cut face button. Select the outer face to be cut. Create a sketch on the front plane. Press P on your keyboard to bring up the project option. Click on the two top points of the new lines that were created by the face cut. Select the three point arc button from the create drop down menu and sketch an arc onto the two projected points. Roughly sketch lines to close the profile. Select the extrude button and select the closed profile. Extrude cut through the front of the model. From the create drop down menu, select the circular pattern option and select features in the object type drop down. Select the extrude cut feature that's shown in your history bar and circular pattern it eight times. Phase three is making the pillow. Create a sketch on the front plane. Press P on your keyboard to bring up the project option. Select all the inner arc edges to project. Sketch a vertical line from the center of the origin. Sketch a diagonal line from the outermost projected point to the bottom line of the crown and then a horizontal line to the center point. Then use a spline to sketch the pillow profile from the outermost projected line to the center line. Adjust the profile as desired. Select the revolve extrude button. Then select the closed profile to revolve extrude. Select the center line as the axis and then finally, select Join from the Operation menu. Phase 4. Adding the decorative details. Select the Extrude button and select the bottom face of the crown as the profile to extrude down 20 mm. From the Create drop-down menu, select Sphere and select the front plane to map the sphere onto. Create a sphere with a diameter of 16 mm and be sure to select new body from the operation menu. Right click on the sphere body from the bodies list on the left of your screen and select move slash copy. For the move object option it should say bodies. Move the sphere on top of one of the crown spikes till it looks centered enough to you. It's not going to be exactly center, but it will still work. Select circular pattern from the create drop down menu and then under object type, select bodies. Then click on the sphere body and circular pattern it eight times. Create a sketch on the front plane. Press P on your keyboard to bring up the project option and then select the pillow curve line to project. From the Create drop-down menu, click on Sphere. Select the front plane to map the sphere onto and create the sphere as close to the line as possible. Make the sphere 6 mm in diameter and make sure operation is set to New Body. Select Pattern on Path from the Create drop-down menu. Select the sphere body and the projected curve line as the path. Drag and pull the arrow down to where you want the spheres to end on the pillow and create four spheres. Select circular pattern from the create drop down menu 
and then select the four spheres to circular pattern eight times around the center. Create a sketch on the front plane and draw a vertical line from the origin center point. For some reason I drew a horizontal construction line. Please ignore this line. Sketch a horizontal line more or less where you want the top decorative spike to begin coming out of the pillow. Then select point from the create drop down menu and draw a point in the center of the line. You'll see a triangle appear once your cursor reaches the center. Once the point is in the center, click on it. Select the coincident button and then click on the center line to place the point onto the line. Give the line a dimension of 31 millimeters. Draw a construction line next to the center line and make it 43 millimeters. I used this line to give me a rough idea for how high the top spike would be. Sketch half of a teardrop using the spline option. Adjust it how you want. Then sketch the rest of the half profile for the top spike. Select the half profile and revolve extrude it around the center line. Make sure that join is selected for operation. Phase 5 is making the inside of the crown hollow. Make a sketch on the front plane and draw a vertical line from the center of the origin. Project the bottom line of the crown and sketch a vertical line from the projected line. Set the space between the vertical line and the outer projected point to 6.5 millimeters. Select the mirror option and then mirror the line using the center line as the mirror line. Select three point arc from the create drop down menu and sketch the arc touching the top points of the mirrored lines. Set the dimension of the lines to 55 millimeters and adjust the arc as desired. Then select one of the halves of the sketched profile and revolve cut it around the center. Phase 6 is softening the edges using the fillet option. Select fillet from the modify drop down menu and select the edges that you want to soften. I made the radius of the fillet 1 mm. Phase 7 is creating the holes in the crown so that you can add ribbons to tie the crown to your head. Create a sketch on the bottom plane of the crown. Sketch two circles from the center of the origin. Make the first one 128 millimeters and the second 122 millimeters. Then sketch a horizontal construction line from the center and then two lines on either side of it also from the center.
dimension each line to have a 9 degree angle between them and the middle horizontal line. Select Plane at Angle from the Construct drop-down menu and select the Z axis. Set the angle to minus 30 degrees. Then select Offset Plane and click on the angled plane. Set the distance to 10.5 mm and create a sketch on the offset plane. Project the point where the lines from the previous sketch meet. From the projected point, draw a vertical construction line. Then sketch another two circles from the projected point. Make one 128 mm and the other 122 mm. Then project the two angled lines from the previous sketch. Make sure that they are construction lines. Sketch two three-point arcs, starting and ending where the circles and the angled lines intersect. Make sure that the construction button is deselected when you sketch them. Then use lines to create a closed profile with the arcs. Select the loft option from the create drop down menu and select the two closed profiles of both sketches. Set the operation to cut. Then create a one millimeter fillet on the hole's edge. Select the mirror option from the create drop down menu. Set the object type to features and then from the history line, select the loft feature. Select the right plane as the mirror plane. Fill it the other whole edge with one millimeter as well. And finally, Soften all desired edges with the fillet option. Anyway guys, if you made it to this point in the video, well done and thank you. I'm impressed. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you were following along with the 3D modeling tutorial, I hope that my tutorial helped you learn more about how to model in Fusion 360 if you are a beginner. So that's it from me. I hope you're having a lovely week and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.